People? No. Oh, we had 13 likes and it's just dropped by one. Now I've appeared. Oh, That's, yeah, rude. That's rude. No, we're back up to 13. Yeah, I'm afraid we're a little shaky. Uh, our plans to use the action camera didn't quite come to fruition. But uh, I can do this. Oh. And the camera now floats in the air majestically. Um, I realise we've done this the wrong way around because now my assistant cannot see the camera. So bear with and we shall... Here we go. Am I flipped? Or is it you? Hello. Oops. Hello. Where's the flip? Flip mode engage. Is that better? Yeah. So there we go. Here we are. We're, we're at the NEC. We're live uh, in Birmingham. Uh, good to be here again. And we're starting um, on the barn find section because it's incredible. I mean, for a start, look at this. This is an Austin three litre because it converted into an estate car stroke van, stroke ambulance. I'm not sure, entirely sure what the background of this is. I've known of this car for a long time. I know some of my friends have also known of it. Uh, I shall say hello at this point to John in New Zealand and Peter in uh, Australia, both own Austin three litres. And uh, yeah, I think they know of this car as well. It's just extraordinary and it is for sale. Oh, there you go. That would suggest it was an ambulance at some point. But uh, it needs a little work, I'm gonna say. There are so much more to see. So th this section is sponsored by the insurance company Footman James, and uh, the, the barn find section has become a regular vibe at this show. But... Yeah. Right, hopefully we're back. Sorry, okay. we're, we're, we're relying on their I Wi-Fi. The yeah, we we're, we're run out of hands. So hopefully we're back. But yeah, beautifully lit, very artistically here. Uh, Jarrett Javelin Deluxe. Uh, flat four engine, independent front suspension, beautiful cars, and uh, built up in Bradford in Yorkshire. And uh, they're so pretty and so technically advanced for their time. Yeah, Co coming out in the sort of late 1940s. But the interesting fact is it was Gerald Palmer was the man behind the engineering of these cars. And if you back up, Gerald Palmer then worked for BMC and came up with the ZA and ZB magnets. Uh, so that's what well, this is. This is a ZA, very, very crusty. But you can kind of see, I think, a de de design similarity a bit. This kind of looks like an evolution of that in some ways. But uh, yeah, this one is a little on the crispy side. It is not um, too wholesome. Have a poke in there, go and have a look. So. Hopefully we're coming through live and clear. We can't actually see the chat at the moment, yeah. which is... Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Connection issues. Oh, are we coming through loud and clear now? That's the main thing. Lovely. Is it, oh, look. It's even got a yellow number plate on the back. Lovely. But yeah, there's a Ford Capri here. Not quite as nice as the one I drove recently. Go, go and zoom in on the sticker. I know you want to. Really, really nice. That's going to be a fair um, restoration project for someone. And uh, over here, well, we've got a Rover P6, um, the uh, P6B with a V8 engine. That's a Series 2. Um, it might be in Mexico brown. I think there's brown in there under the dirt. Wonderful cars. And we've got a Jaguar over here. I'm not sure what size the engine is. I'll go and find out. Bear with. Yeah, it's what's latterly known as a Mark IV, but they were never called the Mark IV um, in, in uh, production. Uh, which one has this got? This has got the three and a half litre engine. So it came as one and a half litre, two and a half litre, and three and a half. So this was the full fat version, uh, pre-war design, but I think just made it into post-war production as well. Fascinating cars. I have driven one of these. There's a lovely photo that exists on the internet, if you search for it, of all the Jaguar dealers at the launch party for these cars, which was the 1930s. Absolutely stunning. Reliant Scimitar, this is an SE5A. Very, very pleasant. We should probably go and have a look at this really weird Land Rover. Yeah. It's a Land Rover, but it's kind of got an ambulance body, but it's also got armoured, like, windows, reinforced windows on it. It's uh, an extraordinary thing. Might need floors, possibly a gearbox.
Oh, there we go. Apparently, it was for transporting very secure <laughs> sheep. Brilliant. It does look like the gearbox is in the back, so there you go. Gearbox is there with it. Um, Austin A60 van. It does that, the chat does vanish. No, it does just ping off sometimes. Uh, if you click there, sometimes it'll come back. No. OK, we'll just, we're just broadcasting in silence and hoping it's working. Yeah, Austin A60 here. This is quite a late one from the early 70s, which is about the end of production. They uh, just kept making them and making them because they sold, so they didn't, never bothered updating them. Uh, Ford Corsair here. Beautiful cars. Available with V4 or straight four engines. And, and look at this Mini. It's a Mini with like an aftermarket bumpy boot. We, we've, seen we've seen pictures on the internet, yeah. It's a really weird design. Old oh, radio, yeah. Old magazines in the back as well. I don't know, I don't know how they've attached it. Hello, how are you doing? We are currently live on the internet. We hope Brilliant. that the technology is working. Is this well, yours? This is my dad's. Oh, wow. This is my dad's, yeah. He picked it up in Coventry uh, just after the first lockdown 2020. Okay. Uh, one owner from New. Yeah. Obviously, a very unsightly boot on the end. And it, yeah. It, it, it is, it's an aftermarket product that you could buy in the early 60s. Oh, wow. Apparently. That's a nice advertisement from a magazine or something. Yeah. Wonderful. Is it, though? Is it? Well, I mean, it adds some boot space, doesn't it? it does, well, it does, yeah. It yeah, does. look at that. The question I'm, I'm asking everyone, if it was yours and you were going to restore it, would you keep the boot? 100%. Yeah. Because how rare exactly. is it? There can't be any more, can there? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It, it is split in opinion. Yeah. I'd it's a very early Mini as well, though, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is. I'll notice you've got the, the starting handle yes. poking out. Yes. Go around the front and have a look at that as well. Apparently, that's quite rare. Yeah, I, I've never seen one in situ. Yeah, here is the starting handle just sticking out of the wheel arch because, of course, it's a transverse engine. I hadn't even really re realised that ever happened, so that's quite fascinating. Super. Also, she is up and running. She did run. OK. Not, not very well. Yeah. But, yeah, she did run a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are trying to sell it, by the way, as well. So, oh, OK. Uh, if you're interested. I'm not personally, <laughs> but uh, someone on the internet might be. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, come to the show, you might be able to buy a Mini. Yeah. Wow. Fabulous. Thanks for showing us around. That's, That's right, lovely. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, come on then. Okay, unfortunately, you can't smell it on the internet, but that is um, <laughs> absolutely delicious. Marvellous. It's getting a bit uh, Fred Flintstone as well, this car. Yeah, yeah. Weren't Minis one of the first cars with transversely mounted engines? Not one of the first. There were some German and Czech companies did it uh, a little earlier, but it was kind of the first to make it mainstream. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. No problem at all. And congratulations, Oh, thank you. Right, we're going to have a peek at this uh, Cavalier um, convertible. Interesting because the Cavalier Mark II was available. Oh, hello. It's our trucker friend. It was available as a two-door in some markets right through production. We had Cavalier two-doors very early on, but then we lost them. But then the uh, Cabriolet came back, as we can see here, usually in um, SRI trim, I think. So, yeah, there we go. That is the barn find section. We're hoping you're there. We can't see any chat at the moment. Yeah, we're kind of just hoping it is actually working. You go a bit, we, we, we've lost Devin to the Mark 1 Escort. We've got a Chrysler PT Cruiser. Very Paul Cowlin, that is, I think. But really, all the fun for me is over in Hall 5, so I think we're going to take a walk over there. Yeah. We've lost him. Oh, well, OK. Thank you, Freeful. Where's he going? Right, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go off with the camera. You 
find the boy. You got it? Okay. This is the joys of doing lives. But yeah, we, we drove over this morning in the uh, half a million mile Picasso and now we're um, enjoying the show. But like I say, Hall 5 is always where the real fun is. And we've already had a very quick run around there this morning. Yeah, yeah, lots of friends. Oh, we, we're going to look at some Fords. In fact, I'm not sure we've explored that deep in this hall yet, have we? So, if you, sporty Fords are your thing, here you go. Um, RS2000 Escort, RS Turbo um, Mark III next to it, and the Mark IV, also an RS yeah, Turbo. I've seen, I've seen that Sierra, these were hidden behind it. Wait, ah. wait, 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 wait. Uh, oh, look what's on the end, girlfriend. Go, go look. I'm going to have to come in close so I get the weep of excitement. Oh, my God, look at the colour. Yeah, Mark VI Escort. So I think that's also an RS2000. Yep, yeah, we'll get marinas. Okay, yep, we know where they are in Hall 5. Yep, oh, there's a Cosy. So coming up this way, we've got another Ford Corsair here. Oh, that's nicely done. Big steelies. Oh, we've lost it. What? Oh, AC Cobra. But over here, one of my favourites here is the XR4i. I just love them. The twin rear wings, the split rear side window. Is this why we now have that spoiler for Betty? Yeah, yeah, double wing spoiler. Yeah. I'm, I might not fit it, I might. Who knows? Oh, early XR3, still on carburettors. Oh, look at this uh, Fiesta Mark 1 XR2. That is uh, shiny underneath, I'm going to say. So, yeah, I hope you're all well out there in internet land. This feels a bit weird. I can't see the chat at all. I've just got a very excited camera lady because there are some sporty Fords. Oh, I'm liking this. Oh, look at look at the brown velour. That is absolutely magnificent. Yeah, we've got um, probes variously. No better way to impress a lady than ha saying, have you seen my probe? Do you like a probe? Oh, look at this, unregistered. Wow. What's the story there then? So they're looking to restore it, but it's never been registered on the road. So 129 miles. Wow. Ah, oh, there's hope yet. Yeah, we're still in the Ford section. There could be a Ryan's, you never know. Uh, I've got Sierra's been modified here. But this is what I love about this show. There is a lot of stuff going on everywhere you look. So they've yanked the engine out of that one. Uh, it sounds like some engine work going over on over here with the Corsairs, rare, well, unique pickup, I think. That's very of its time. So yeah, they got, so look, this is their list of all the cars and what they're doing with them. So they're having a busy old time. And I've, I've done this show on a stand. I know what it's like, you're trying to do a job. Everyone wants to come up and talk to you about the job. So it takes forever to get anything done. Yeah, yeah. 45 minutes to um, do any work in a whole day. Mark III Cortinas, lovely green estate. I'm liking that very much. That is an absolute beauty. Oh, we're we'll just going to pause. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. We'll be able to do your stand later on. Yeah. Oh, TC's here. So this is a Cortina that used to belong, one well, on the end, uh, used to belong to Pete C and uh, has been undergoing some gentle restoration, I'm going to say, because look, look, at, look at the patina on it, you, the patina on the Cortina, it's absolutely magnificent. So, uh, yeah, love it. 
So rather than try and make it look immaculate, which would lose all the character of this car, it has been very, very gently restored. Hello. Would you like to tell us about TC? We are currently live. Hello. I'll just have to pop um, my mic off a minute. Do I need a microphone? Yeah, I'm going to hold this one near you. Okay, thank Thanks you. Um, yeah, this is TC. He's a 1972 Mark III Ford Cortina Estate. Um, he's a base model, so he's got no frills of any oh. kind out of the factory. Poverty? Uh, worse than poverty. Yeah. Uh, no cigarette lighter when it came out of the factory. No radio, wow. uh, no anything really. And um, rubber mats on the floor apart from the transmission tunnel. And a 1300 cross flow engine pulled this thing along. Wow. Yeah, it's, it was, but the engine when I bought this, it was uh, basically had, sh had its last legs really. Yeah. So we've you, now you, got, you bought it from Pete C. Didn't I did, you? and he's over here. Oh, um, okay. But I've had it now since September 2020. Yeah. Um, I've done the welding on the floors, which I've documented on my channel, Hooked on Classics. Hooked um, on Classics. There you yes. go. No, take note of that one. That's it. Uh, you have to scroll a bit because mostly you'll find music. Um, so I've done the welding on the floors, I've done mechanics, I can show you the engine if you like. Oh, let's have um, a peek. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I've done poly bushes underneath, I've done um, brakes, tyres, wow. I even painted the wheels. Uh, but you haven't done too much, you've really kept the character of it. But that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Because um, it's an honest car and it's got, it shows its story. And by the way, the chat's got, just got really excited because you've appeared, Simone. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Like Simone, Simone. <laughs> oh, hold on. We're going in live. This is live. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, come in, camera. So we have this almighty 1600 engine. It's oh, not wow, very so it's, got, it's gone big born now. Yeah, it's not very pretty, I must admit. But I have yeah, but that, that. that's brilliant. I love seeing immaculate cars, but yeah. I love seeing cars like this that really represent them, how they looked in my childhood. Yes, yeah, and same as me, to be honest with you. Uh, I've been offered a high lift cam mm -hmm. and something else I can't quite remember. Um, but I've done a few twigs and pieces in here. I've got an automatic choke, which I really don't like, so I'm going to change it to manual. Good plan. And when you, when you start the car up, you can control the revs then instead of it trying to figure out what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, but I've got an aftermarket radiator. It's got an electric fan in the front as well. Um, I've got a few mod cons, yeah. but not a huge amount. I think the most mod con is this brake server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a sensible um, upgrade. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I recently upgraded the, uh, the alternator because mm -hmm. it was causing power problems. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you've got a kill switch in there now. Lovely. But yeah, it's um. It's just fabulous. I love the condition of it. Yeah. So. It's a shame you weren't here yesterday because we were doing the windscreen swap. Ah. So the windscreen is, was really scratched, really badly scratched. Yeah. And um, we changed it for a Sun Demo from a 2000E. Nice. Um, but this was originally this was originally a co-op car. Well, they bought it off the original owner, then repainted it in their co-op colours because this is ah. the colour. And under here is the Olympic blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. I do have plans. All this is going to come off. I'm going to repaint it the original colour. Yeah. But that's going to be a big job. Yeah, yeah. But I want all this and all the filler and everything. I'm going to keep it as is. Beautiful. Oh, I'm yeah. so pleased to hear that. <laughs> well, thank you for showing us around, no and we'll, we'll carry on You're walking around the show. Come and have a we will come and have a look later, later, on. later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Super. Excellent. Right. We'll continue our tour. So uh, yeah, amazing cars here. Amazing works going on. The racing pumas. They've got the toolkits out. So much going on. Because in a way, you've got a, an entire weekend, you, you're undercover. So if you haven't got any tinkering space, you book your car into the show and you come and do it here. But a little um, Wolseley Hornet convertible, or well, a pair of them, in fact. So that's uh, remarkable to see. I'm going to pop my mic back on again. And then I think we're into the auto jumble. So I think that's probably not where we're going to head next. We'll loop round and head to Hall 5. Oh, wow, Crayford Puma folding motorbike. That looks like your cup of tea. So, yeah, these Worsley Hornets were made for a Heinz soup um, giveaway, 57 being the varieties, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's one beautiful. I think we may have seen that one before. It's a lovely condition. Oh, hello, Australia. Good to have you on board. I haven't seen any Australian Fords yet, but you never know. So we're into the console classic 
and the um, classic Capri um, area. So again, strip down so you can see all the detail. Oh yeah, well here we go, there's another um, Mark 1 XR2, um, a racing Cozzy. Where's that's one of the genuine ones? It's got an Andy number plate. Andy Rouse was famous for his exploits in the Sierras back in the British Touring Car Championship. You do like a big spoiler, don't you? I do. Yeah. And yeah, I don't love your double ridiculous. No, I don't think Betty would look good with one, I must admit. Right, shall we um, mosey over to Hall 5? Oh yeah, sorry. Hello. Yeah. Are you asking me or the entire internet? Oh, me. Um, I do like that Austin 3 liter. I think that's magnificent. But uh, that Jawit Javelin has just fired up my need to own one at some point. They're just uh, brilliant cars. Yep, yeah, we're, we're, we're heading to Hall 5. It's something going on with the back axle, I think. Um, so um, Ivan's got the dragster stance going on at the moment. But we're just heading to Hall 5 over here. Yeah. Oh no, we're back at the Mark 6 Escort. I mean, that's quite rare, an RS2000 4x4. That is uh, a very unusual sight. Right, let's cut through this way. Yeah, all the tool manufacturers are here as well. Uh, calm down, there are people um, selling wine. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got some minis being restored here. The real mini company. Oh, excellent. Nice to have you in the chat, Mr. Chops. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And Furious Driving was here yesterday and isn't here today as well. We're not taking it personally, honest. Oh, lovely little mini pickup with the original rear lights. So originally they had the rear lights from a Rover P4. And they later changed to the same ones Tucker's got. Right, we shall um, burst through here. It's getting quite busy today. I'm not used to being able to walk around the show. So lots of uh, leather jackets, if that's your thing. Oh, excellent, Hobart in the chat. Who have we got from Hobart then? Who, sorry? Glenn Green. Oh, okay. Hello, Glenn. Hello. Hello. Not just now, thank you. Hello. How's things? Very good, thank you. We are currently broadcasting live, so enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. See you later. Right, here we go. We have made it. Yeah, we are descending into Hall 5. So yeah, here we go. This is where all the fun is. It's always the same, no matter which show, whether it's the November one or the uh, March show, it always seems to be Hall 5, which is where the magic is. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we're gonna lose, it, it is very noisy in here. There isn't a lot I can do about that. Uh, I think, who, oh, disgraceful, disgraceful. Oh, hello. There's an interestingly modified S-Type Jaguar, complete with triple lock um, wheels. Oh, here's a car I've seen before. I can't remember if I've had it on camera before. This is the Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club. This is a fully driving cutaway silver shadow which I think was prepared for a motor show back in the day and it was passed to the Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club so I'm just going to take you in for a closer look because it is brilliant and it is fully functioning it does actually drive so yeah there is the 6.75 litre V8 engine you've got uh, conventional springs at the front of this one early Shadows did actually have um, hydro pneumatics, so uh, yeah, really good. Uh, hello from Dali, Victoria. Oh, you got the merch, brilliant. Thank you. Are you the chap who was unwell with a cold? If you are, I hope you are now better. But oh, I've got to get a camera back, apparently. 
Uh, Austin Sevens, good to see. Excellent. Oh, so this is a Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud chassis, I think. The forerunner of the Silver Shadow, still with a separate chassis. Uh, came out in um, 1958, I want to say. It's got an RR1965 number plate on it. But 65 would have been just before the Silver Shadow came out. But yeah, lo lovely people, I have to say, in the Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club. Absolute pleasure to deal with. Look at this. This looks like a, a working... It does actually run by the look of it. Look, they've got a dashboard and everything. It's out of a silver spirit. So uh, I wonder if they're firing that up at any point. That's probably a bit naughty to do that, but it looks like it will do it. We've even got the dashboard. That's one of the best running engine displays I've seen. Over on the RH Specialist Insurance, we've got a slightly barn findy Opel Monza. Lovely cars, utterly beautiful. MGA race car here. That looks really nice. This is the MG Owners Club stand. Oh, this is an interesting car. Come with me. So at first glance, this just looks like an MGB Roadster, but then you notice the windscreen is actually from the coupe. And this is from an aborted attempt to bring MG back after production ended in 1981. I have a feeling Aston Martin were involved with this. So they uh, tried to bring it back to make it um, a production car again. But yeah, it beautifully finished inside. But under the bonnet, we find not the B series engine, but the overhead cam O series engine. A modification that really um, MG should have done themselves. So that is a complete one-off. You will not see another one of those. Yeah, we've got Calibras here. We'll find Calibras. Uh, another magnet, uh, the, the Z series magnets. That one a little more, um, le well, a little less barn fine. Absolutely beautiful cars, stunningly pretty. Uh, we've got uh, a bit of chitty action going on over here by the look of it. It's not actually shitty, shitty bang bang. It hasn't even got the number plate on it or the, the, the flying bit, but uh, it's an impressive build nonetheless. But. Someone's got the horn. Now this, this may be one of my cars of the show. This is an NSU uh, Sport Prins. So it's based on the Prins rear, rear engine uh, saloon car. It's got a twin cylinder overhead cam engine. And the engine itself is a technical revolution. It's got these sort of rotating shafts to drive the camshaft rather than chains or uh, uh, a timing belt. And from what I remember, I think it's a transverse twin uh, mounted at the back. But look at the little fins, absolutely beautiful. So, hello, spanners and clank. So, uh, yeah, Bertoni styled these. Uh, he did build, uh, the Bertoni company did build the first few bodies, but then they transferred production to Germany. So, that is one of the most beautiful, lovely cars you've never heard of. Oh, thank you very much. I want to turn around for a headlamp wiper moment. Yeah, Volvo 240. We were looking at a 240 yesterday, as a matter of fact, at Whiteland Restorations. It was not behaving. Uh, Ford Probe again. Uh -huh. uh, lovely Cortina with Hubnut sticker. Oh, Beautiful. Um, this is This is all original. Okay. This has never been restored. Yeah, Adrian, is it? Yes, it's yeah, Adrian. Yeah. Yes. It's, this is as it left the factory. Wow. In 1980. Gosh. Can we have a look inside? Yes, by all means, yes. It's done 19 and a half thousand miles. Wow. <laughs> so, barely run in. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. Beautiful. So, what specs this one? It's a 1.6 GL. Okay, so kind of middle, middle of the of, range? Yeah, it was yeah, one of the popular versions. Yeah, yeah. The middle manager range, as yeah. they used to call it. Lovely. <laughs> great to see in that sort of condition because try as you might you can't really restore a car to this condition it no it never has quite the right it's, feel what's interesting because everyone says oh, i get it re-sprayed but this is original paint it's original paint and it's I only original it. once and yes that's right it's only yeah. original one but it's, it's got some fantastic features even i've got to show you the best one okay this oh. is uh this <laughs> you've even got the original ford 
Door gaps. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Look at this. <laughs> that is, um, so when yeah. When people say, oh, your back door doesn't fit, well, that's how it That's how it came from the factory. Good <laughs> grief. Super. Well, thank you for showing us around. That's, that's a lovely pleasure. car. No worries. Right, on, on we go. And you. Uh, Volvo 144 here. Very nice. And a C30 here on the Volvo Owners Club stand. I do quite like these. I think they're a proper squat looking little thing. A lovely little Austin A40 uh, drop head there on the Austin County's Car Club stand. That's good to see. Uh, the Mercedes Benz Club have got some nice cars. Look at this low rider. W108 series, I think that is. That is uh, all of the lows. So, yeah, are people enjoying it so far? Are we doing okay? okay Everything's working? Ah, oh, yes, there we go. Right, Lancaster Pride of Ownership. So this is where there's going to be a vote to, over the course of the weekend for people to pick their favourite cars. So we've got this lovely um, MGB, very late one, limited edition, right at the end of production. Uh, Mazda MX-5. I wonder if that's the one. It's a Glen Eagle Special oh, Edition. We may have seen that in a previous report here on the MX-5 um, Owners Club stand. A Toyota MR2, very, very nice. But this pair on the end here are quite interesting because these Mercs have got a gorgeous 108 um, 220 coupe and a Pagoda SL, husband and wife. So husband and wife, they have matching Mercedes cars. So they are competing against each other this very weekend. I'm interested to see how that goes. We'll have a quick look at Mantas. Very late uh, Manta GSI on an E-plate. Mark 1 Manta next to it. I do like a Manta. And we've got a lovely little Mini here in what looks like Nightfire Red. Uh, Escort 1300 Sport. There's a gentle performance forward for you. Mark 1 Golf. Still very, very pretty cars. And another absolute beauty, the Austin A90 Atlantic. Well, that's getting a fair bit of attention. Rightly so. Lovely cars. Uh, we've got the World Cup Rally folks are here. Uh, the uh, historic uh, marathon rally group. So all these cars, you do get them competing. They're not just static objects. Uh, but it looks like this one took part in London to Mexico City Rally um, back in 1970, I think that was. But let's carry on going around the pride of ownership. Yeah, look at this. Astonishing condition. The uh, Birmingham Science Museum, when I was a child, had one of these in that colour. Nowhere near that condition. And I was always fascinated by it. Uh, BMW E28. It's a 525E. Oh, OK. We'll get to that. Uh, another racing Puma. Volvo P1800. Really, really nice. Yeah, Porsche 944. Yeah. Yeah, Audi Quattro, of course. No, I didn't see the Audi Quattro. No. No, it's all right. No one heard you. I know. Yeah. Uh, Mark 1 Capri. I'll just show that the easy way. Let's go <laughs> higher up. Very, very nice. And a little Mark 1 that? Metro next to it. Um, we've got a Mercedes Benz 190 Cosworth here. So 2.3 16 valve four cylinder engine. So basically the homologation cars for German touring cars. With the uh, Cosworth tuned twin cam engine. So oh, they were nice very, very punchy. Enough for a cuppa. Oh, thank, thank you. you very much. Cuppa's always appreciated. Headline wipe a moment. Mm. Right, carry on around this section. We've got the uh, Mark 1 Capri Cabaret. That's looking quite funky. And uh, Toyota Paseo. So, yeah, a lovely range of cars here on the um, Lancaster Insurance Pride of Ownership. Oh, shame. Thank you very much. That's very kind. That probably buys us one sandwich. <laughs> Only joking. The food isn't that bad. Honest. Uh, Revs Limiter are here. And this is the Revs Restore Land Rover. 
So uh, it's kind of a community restored land drop. Should we go in and have a look? So it, it, it's been a community project, lots of people involved. Um, just to, you know, the, the art of bonding through mechanical fettling. So it's good work the they do. Well. Yes, they have Revs Limiter on um, Facebook and Twitter, I believe. So good to see this coming along. The, the back isn't quite matching the front. Looks like they've painted the back and they haven't got the front there yet, maintaining the patina. But we've got all the excitement over here. Uh -huh. Because uh, the lady herself seems to have vanished, but uh, this is Steph's Nancy, her Morris Minor, but has been restored over the past God knows how many years. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. And uh, yeah, this is lovely because I've known of this car for a very long time. This is the first time I've seen Nancy the Morris Minor in the metal and the restoration work looks beautiful because uh, Nancy did not look like this. She had big old spotlights on the front. A lot of the chrome work had been blacked out. So yeah, been... people don't know, High Driver Classic. Yeah, Steph of High Driver Classic. Yeah, she is, in fact. But she also works for Lancaster Insurance, which is why her car is here. So, yeah, lovely to see. Well done, Steph. And I believe Lancaster have an opportunity to win this beautiful little... Uh, oh, it's an Austin Healy Sprite. There we go, very rare. So the um, rebadged midget. And uh, we've seen this one before. This is Katie Bushell's um, Volkswagen this Scirocco. This proved very popular when we went to the Women's Day meet. People were asking after the Scirocco. This is Katie's yeah. uh, Scirocco called Sylvester. Yeah, so there's Katie posing with it. She's obviously run away to enjoy the show. Yeah. Maybe. You might be too young. But we'll, we'll come back and have a look. Yeah. Right then, uh, coming over here, we've got uh, the Fiat Motor Club, always putting a good display. Matt Furious driving's Fiat Idea, which um, I've never really looked at one of these before, so it's interesting to see one up close in the metal. They're a bit bigger than I expected. So uh, I think that's definitely an interesting project. I fully commend Aww. Furious for buying it. Ah, but yeah, Panda 4x4 here as well. And uh, if we come around the front, it's usually that noise. I have no idea what that is. Probably Danny Hopkins on the live stage. Uh, Fiat Punto. I think this is the earliest surviving Punto on an L plate. So that's 1993. So as a reminder that the Punto is 30 years old. That's depressing. Beautiful cars. Beautiful cars, I think, the Punto. Every bit of design I really like. The smooth front. Look at the interior, look at the tweed. Oh my gosh. And these beautiful rear lights as well. It's just a lovely bit of design. And that is next to its predecessor, the Fiat Uno. So it's like it might be a turbo IE. Brilliant hot hatch. So 40 years of the Uno apparently. And here's a car that you can see tested on the channel. This is Nigel's Fiat 127 Sport, which has undergone... Oi! Leave you know alone. This has undergone a serious amount of work since you last saw it on the channel. I think it's had a complete engine rebuild and all sorts. So, uh, yeah, it, it is a changed car. No multiplayer, no. We follow you on YouTube. Oh, thank you very much. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, thanks. You're good. You're not on Devil's Bridge anymore, are you? No, no, just on the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've got a caravan up by Devil's Bridge. Oh, yeah? yeah? We drove through there this morning on the way here. Oh, right. Yeah, everything's all good. Yeah, all good. We are currently live streaming a video. Oh, so uh, you're on the internet now. Congratulations. See you later. <laughs> See you later. So they've got some work going on on here as well. With this... Um, 127, not quite as tidy as Nigel's, but, you know, work in progress. It will get there, I'm sure. Behind us, we've got Armstrong Sidleys. Uh, these are Star Sapphires. They were the last of the Armstrong Sidley range. Identify a Star Sapphire by the fact the doors open that way and not the Suicide Manor. The earlier Sapphire had suicide doors. Wonderful cars, really refined, but sadly the market for them, they just stayed too traditional. They couldn't rival the likes of uh, Jaguar. Hello. Uh, Lancia Beaters. Good to see here. 
So we've got a folding rear section on the roof and then a targa roof section as well. Got some very early Beatles. Oh, hold on, what is that? Allard Owners Club. So Sidney Allard is the only man ever to win the Monte Carlo Rally in a car bearing his own name. So he had his own company and he did build cars, uh, sports cars, but were good enough to compete on the Monte Carlo Rally. I've never seen this one before. It's like weird coupe. That is an extraordinary looking thing. I don't know what the story is with it. But uh, anyway, we need to go back to these Beatles. It, it's so difficult to try and get around the entire show and show you everything. You really do need to come for yourself. Show is still open tomorrow. And uh, I think if you um, head to the uh, website and enter Hubner as a discount code, it will take two pounds off every ticket. But yeah, 49, is that really a 49 Beetle? Yeah, 1949 standard Beetle, 1131 CC. So interesting to see all the differences with the Beetle we tested recently. Definitely not for the Beetle. Yeah. Hello, how are you doing? We are currently uh, live, oh, just to warn you. I, I do have a mouthful of sandwich. It's nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. Are you all all right? Yeah, yeah, very well. Just admiring the 49 here. And is that even 46, 46 Beetle? Wow. This 46 Beetle is owned by our club president. Okay. He's had it for about 45 years. Oh, wow. And he's only got around to restoring it within the last six or seven years, I guess. Gosh. Um, but it's lovely. lovely yeah, car. amazing. Mm. That's got, got the split rear window. I think it's locked, so I'll yeah, yeah. let you in. But if I show you the engine. Yeah. Because I drove a Beetle very recently, so it'd be interesting to see how yeah. different it is. Oh, there we 1100 go. 1100 cc's. Whoa. So the speed is not there. No, no, non existent. However, it's original. And yeah. That's the key thing. <laughs> Beautiful, that is great to see. You, you just don't see the early Beatles around. There's probably only two or three in this country. Wow. And not that many in Germany anymore. Yeah. Because, Brilliant. I mean, they'd only just got production started after the end of the war. Yeah, yeah. And um, so obviously there weren't that many made, and they were throwaway cars in those days. Indeed, yeah. And that's what happened to them. Super. Well, I'm glad he got there in the end. That's he wonderful to did. see. Yeah. Uh, the 49 up there belongs to Andy. He was chatting to this gentleman. Yeah. He bought that in Belgium, I suppose, 10 or 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, that one wasn't it was already restored yeah um, so that's a uh, another example yeah lovely and then there's mine of course which you've seen before yeah yeah and that's, <laughs> that's quite similar what's that so mid 60s yeah it's yeah 1300. i drove a, drove a 63 recently excellent lovely okay. lovely car to drive yeah, yeah. I, mean, I imagine very different to these early ones uh, yes uh, back in 2007 my wife and i drove one of these well 1951 beetle from here to Bad Camberg to the oh, wow. show in Germany and it was not a pleasant experience. No, no. 25 horsepower yeah. and all you, what you looked for was a lorry. Yeah. If you could sit behind a lorry, Slip that tree. was heaven. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> but, Super. Well, there thank you, you very much for nice sharing. To see you. Yeah. Take care. Right, should we pop around this way now? See you later. Uh, Audi Quattro's Rover, uh, sorry, MGZT there with um, aftermarket rear lights. Look, look at this little Austin A30. It looks so mean, but also so cute at the same time. Great stuff. Yeah, we just need to come this way. We missed the Fiat X19, and that's unforgivable. I do love an X19. So this, this one is a late one on a D plate, so that's towards the end of production, when they were just badged as Bertoni's, but it's been modified to where the earlier bumpers rather than the big chunky impact bumpers of the later ones it looks really nice that one the same and this one's still got the chrome bumpers so uh, yeah the, the impact bumpers did stick out rather a lot so i see why people modify them uh to find out where we're going to go next corrado's maybe got, we got corrado's over here and alfa romeo's how long have we been going and people are still watching. Really? What? 
not Come on, people, you can do better. So, yeah, here we are, VR6 oh, Corrado. Oh, thank you, here we go. So, Volkswagen Corrado looking good. Scirocco early, one with a single wiper. So, it was a change to fit two wipers. There's a Morgan over here. Land crabs. Okay, yep, we'll bear that in mind. I think we can find some. Yeah, this is a Morgan Drophead Coupe. That style did not last for very long. Most obviously are the Roadsters. That's about a 2010 example. A quick hello to the uh, Mitsubishi FTOs, just while we're over here. And, uh, oh, I see a car I really need to look at. Let's go over here. We've got the Mitsubishi 3000 GTs or GTOs, depending on what market uh, they were sold in. You got a transverse V6 with four-wheel drive. They're uh, an astonishing bit of technology. And that's a very colorful engine bay. Oh, I think they were a bit big for rallying. They preferred to use Lancers and Evos. Look at this Audi Coupe here on the Club Audi stand. That is an absolutely gorgeous car. I have childhood memories of one of my school friends having one of these uh, Audi Coupes and we used to just jump around on it because it was just waiting for the day it was going to be scrapped. So, yeah, we jumped all over it, jumped in it, pretended to drive it. I oh, know, I feel so bad. Uh, Audi Coupe, it looks like a non-quattro. Oh, hello. How are you doing? We are live. Yeah, hello happy t-shirts available at the Hubbard store. But, but this is Matt who owns the now two Yugo Sarnas. So, uh, how is Yugo Sana life treating you? So, it's taking over at the moment. I'm actually putting my minis as less priority. Oh. So, the Yugos, hopefully, will be up and running very soon. Excellent. So, the red one is now running, driving. Uh, the clutch is gone. Ah. Uh, but thankfully, clutch kit, 25 quid. Oh, so, brilliant. Uh, I've got to fit that. Yeah. And we've got to fix the wipers, which you'll be disappointed to hear don't work at all. Oh, dear. So Whereas the on the white one, I think I tested... The white one's working. I managed to get the wipers working. Yeah, the wipers yeah. working fine on the white one. Uh, yeah. And I think most of the electrical gremlins on the white one are now done. Oh, wow. So we've been... Has this appeared in video been, form yet? Not, not quite yet. Okay, there so fuel, fuel power is the channel. There will, so. be, there will be an update soon. Yeah, excellent. Uh, we'll probably do a combined update on the red one and the white one. Cannot uh, wait to see it. And then hopefully the red one will be ready for an MOT within a couple of months. Oh, that's exciting times. Indeed. Yeah, and excellent. Obviously, you'll be the first point of call to oh. come and have a drive with it. I would be amazed. Thank you. Yeah. And the Sorry? And the Sirion. Oh, we've got to talk about the Sirion. If it, someone likes Daihatsu's. Well, yeah, of course. We, yeah. Drove, we drove it here. So, excellent. Um, yeah, we came up. Uh, Kaz is here. Kaz drove up in the, in the, the Sirion. Yeah, uh, so which yeah, is in your uh, Women's Day video, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, going great. Just MOT'd it. Went straight through. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, the Sirion's going great. And, uh, Hopefully we'll raise some decent charity money for that. By yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that'll look that'll a fun great. trip. Yeah. Excellent. Super. Good. Thank you yeah. very much. Thanks. We should carry on on our you way. Went to the women's thing at three. Yes, yes. Awesome. I'll see you there. And I love your dress. <laughs> see you later. So, yeah, head to the Fuel Power channel uh, to follow the exploits of the Sarnas variously. Yeah. Oh, I love this um, Audi here. The Audi 105S. So it's got a five cylinder engine. So we're just walking past the Sporting Bears area. Uh, this is where you can make a donation to charity and have a passenger ride in any of these vehicles. What's that? Uh, the Mustang caught your eye. That's a Lotus Europa. That's a Carver. Yes, that's what I've been Is the Carver about to go out? Yes, it is. I think we'll stay here and wait as long as you don't mind. Because, yeah, we've got an Alfa Romeo GTV. So it's Aston Martin coming round. And that Carver is going to be hilarious. Well, yeah, good. We've got more Reliance to see. They're in this hall. There are scimitars all over this show this year. So that one's done a, a trip and is now going to be parked up again. It's such a great thing. And they raise thousands of pounds for charity every year with these shows. I love the car was in there. Yeah. Right, so we're just waiting for the car to come around. We've got to wait because hopefully they'll be able to give it a bit of welly around this bend. There is a full test of a carver on my channel, so you can go and check that out. Yeah, don't crash the Audi into the Alfa Romeo while we're recording. That would be bad times indeed. Apparently the turning circle on those Audis is not very good. My little chum would have whipped around that 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, here comes the Alfa Romeo GTV. Yeah, you know, we're playing just set, and I don't know if you know this, but Princess Anne had the same top. Oh my gosh, I was entirely unaware of that. Oh, look at it go. Brilliant. That would be unnerving. I'll take some getting used to it. That's amazing. Watch it, it's going to go around the corner. Oh. Look at that, it just leans into the bends. It's hilarious. Oh, a Cobra. Might be a replica, but it still looks nice. And sounds nice. Right, continue going. I, I think Mini Hubner is going to be emptying out his bank account. So we've got some Javits here. So we saw the uh, Javelin earlier. Um, this is an earlier one where I think it was a flat twin engine. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is a flat twin. Yeah. So Javit loved their flat engines and that continued right through production. So here's another Javelin and we can see the engine in situ. So there we go. Flat four engine in so the late 1940s, remarkable cars. Good to see. Lots of work going on. Good morning. Oh, yeah, work going on. Is, is that a real person? Oh, yeah, it moved. It moved. <laughs> and this is the Javelin. Uh, sorry, Jupiter. So that's the Javelin. This is the Jupiter, which is a sports car version. So fabulous looking cars. Uh, Rover P6s variously. This is the P6 Rover Owners Club. One of two clubs for the Rover P6s. And uh, yeah, we need to go over and have a look at the mini kits. So the mini kits this year are, um, they're uh, effectively doing a tribute to Barry Stimson. So he just went mad for glass fiber and did all sorts of crazy things. So this six wheel mini is one of his things. Uh, this thing next to it is another um, Stimson uh, kit. There's a photo of Barry himself. And more recently, he did camper conversions. So people have noticed things like a Renault Clio camper. That was something Barry Stimson did. And this is his Scorcher. It's a mini engine uh, and then just a couple of seats behind. Technically a three-seater, I believe. So, yeah, mini bug. That's what that one is, I think. So great to see. There's another mini bug here. I think Barry Stimson had a great idea, great eye for design. Yes. Could a, could a mini engine fit in a lit on a sit on lawnmower? It would be a challenge. Mini Hubnut wants to build a sit on lawnmower that's road legal at the moment. And uh, who, who am I to say he can't? But look at this <laughs> Renault Dauphine. That's a, a lot modified. What have we got in the back of this? Uh, is that a flat six or is it a flat four? Might be a flat four. Is it an Alfa Romeo engine or is it a Subaru? It'll be a Subaru, couldn't it? Why don't, I, why don't I read this? Yeah, Subaru engine, uh, 58 Dauphine body shell, a braided gearbox. Probably a good idea. I hope the brakes have been upgraded as well. That's astonishing. Another Ford Corsair, uh, nicely modified. If we go over here, we've got uh, Metros, lovely display of Metros. That is one of the original development cars for the 6R4, I think. So, so really just to try and test out the layout before the final production car. So that, that's a fascinating thing to see. We've got a later MG Metro here. Uh, coming across, we've got the Black Country Classic Car Club. Now, there are people who like a kipper tie. I grew up in the black country, I'm allowed to say that. Lovely maestro van. But look at this, Humber Scepter. Look at the colour on that. That is beautiful. Wasn't it the 1970s a good era for colour? Lovely. And then we get to the 1990s where they had headlamp wipers, but no more colour anymore. Um, we've got um, Trojan Heinkels. Or Heinkel Trojans, I think they are. Heinkel was the German company. Trojan was the British company that built them over here. So, yeah, fascinating car. And that is how you get in through the front door. What is this? A reproduction Fend Flitzer. So, um, Fend, Fritz Fend, was the designer of the Messerschmitt. And that's what he started with. That seems to be 
his starting point. That's a replica of that. And, and then he developed the Messerschmitt um, microcar. There is a test of one of these on the channel, so do look out for it. I've got Maestro Montego Club. Uh, focusing on the Maestro, I think, because it's anniversary year for the Maestro. Uh, so 40 years of Maestros. I've got one Montego up the back there, Montego Estate. Lovely. Ooh. That, that's old. Yeah, my brain is struggling as well, to be honest. Uh, but we've got the uh, Friskies. I think at the November show, if I remember rightly, I think this was still a bare shell and we're still working on it. Or they had um, a, um, a separate shell, I can't remember exactly. But yeah, the Frisky. That's what I said. Did I say 40? No, it's like it's got Alan in there. Oh, okay. I'm older than the Pisco. Hello, how are you doing? You're right. Yeah, we are currently streaming on the internet. But yeah, are you doing well? Yeah, good, yeah. yeah. Bump into someone from your village. That's, that's how life works here. Good to see you. Uh, so, yeah, Giovanni Michelotti stole the body on these. Um, they had a little Meadows engine, I think. We've seen this one so many times before. This is a Monte Carlo car. But, yeah, brilliant little things. Wonderful. So, is, is there anything anyone would like to see that we haven't seen yet? Do let us know and we'll see if we can find it. Oh, yeah, they're at the back corner. Yeah, uh, we've got an MG Maestro Turbo there with a the Tickford body kit. Very nice. Right, let, let, let's head to the French area and then we'll go land crab hunting. A Citroen what? Yeah, yeah, we're heading straight towards them. Um, they should be around here somewhere, I would have thought. We've got Rover Owners Club over there. I don't know where the SD1 club is. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen any Subarus at all, sadly. But we'll see what we can do. Lovely Rover 800. This is the Norwich Classic Vehicle Club. Uh, TR7 being welded up. Uh, so we've got Simca Thousands here. I drove that one for a magazine feature many, many years ago. But uh, yeah, fascinating little rear engine cars. Oh, oh yes. Well, first of all, we've got a little story to tell. It starts with the 1204 Special here, which is also available as a smaller 1100. Very clever, transverse engine, hatchback, kind of a pioneering car. They did a pickup version, which we can see here. Yeah, and then after the pickup, they developed the Matra Rancho on the pickup platform. So despite all the bolted on plastic, the fiberglass rear body, this really is one of those. So, hello, Becca. Hello. It's Passenger Seat Podcast. Is that right? I just had a I'm not Yeah, we're just currently live. So are you, are you having a merry time? I am, yes. Excellent. I've seen almost everyone I came here to see, so that's That's good. impressive, because it's only had, lunchtime. Yeah, so. and I had a really lovely drive in as well, because as soon as I hit the A14, I was following a little blue Mini. Oh. Uh, Mini Sprite, I think it was. Followed it all the way, and then it was going a bit slow for me, so I overtook it in Peggy. The Morris Minor. Yeah, 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 and then it caught up with me when we got to the roundabout for the NEC, so I was like, oh. They're all good on roundabouts. Yes. yes. Yeah, they're, they're cornered a lot better than yeah. me, I think. But yeah, no. Super. Well, good to see you. We'll yeah. catch you a bit later on. See you. Yeah. So yeah, Macho Rancho, very, very nice. Um, over here. Oh, you know what? I'm not sure the Citroen Car Club have got a stand here. Yeah, we'll get there. We're not, we're not far from them. Uh, Macho Morena here. Beautiful car next to a preceding Bagheera. And uh, here we are on the 2CV GB stand, so we we have um, two CVs, but I don't think we have the Citroen Car Club this year. Oh no, found them, they're on the corner. They're usually right next to each other. So yeah, this is Carl's ex-clown car that he's restored. Uh, we've got a Diane very much in progress here. So w when I um, visited Jono last week, I delivered that section, I think, windscreen panel, and these panels down here, the A panels. 
which he needs because he has bought an Acadian, the van version, but needs restoration. So that couldn't have been better the timing. Um, yeah, here we go, Avocado Rover SD1. So we found the SD1s at last. That's uh, great to see. Avocado is such a colour, isn't it? Amazing. Uh, so yeah, we've got the uh, Rover SD1 there. This is a Vitesse from 1984. Um, should we count how many plenums it's got? Oh, it, it's a single plenum. People get very excited about the twin plenums, but really the twin plenums only existed so Tom Walkinshaw could uh, uh, go racing. Now, this is a car we need to see. Three years ago, we saw this car. It was still a bit of a mess, and it's uh, featured on the Nitro Silvia channel. And it's got the VM diesel engine, the four-headed monster. And uh, I'm, I'm still waiting. We agreed at that show four years ago that I would do a video on this. But as you can see, it's, it's not quite there yet. But we are getting closer. So I was going to see if we can have a chat with James. Uh, Hello. Sorry to interrupt, but we're just doing a live stream, oh, hello. and I was just recalling how I saw this car three years, four years, years ago, I think, yeah, it's it's 2019. Now. Yeah, yeah. It, it's come a long way. Still not there yet. No, but, but last time the engine bay looked reasonably presentable, and yeah. it's the bodywork that was terrible. Yeah, and it's now sort of roll reversal, so all the inside has been painted again. Lots yeah. of the ancillary was stripped off. Um, but yeah, it should all be downhill and you might get to test drive it at some point. Yeah, super. So it's Nitro Sylvia's the yeah, channel, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So how much bodywork have you ended up doing on it? Lots. So Lots. I had new bonnet, front wings, doors, sill on the near side, repairs the sill on the off side, rear lamp panel, repairs to the boot floor. Blimey. I think um, that wing skin is the only original external panel, apart wow. from the roof. So you're still doing the work outside then? Well, I've got a garage now, but oh, luxury. the... the only one day the whole of this project have I done any of it other than off extension cables. Yeah. And that was the day I took to the body shop. They finally wired up my garage. So wow. I had a grinder. So I can't go in right away. Luxury. Yeah, Super. Luxury. Well, thank you very much. We'll leave you to your to your day. So there you go, Nitro Silvia. It's good to catch up with that car again. A dolly. What? 2CV dolly? Uh, I don't think we've got a 2CV dolly. We have got a Charleston. So we'll go over there. This is quite an early Rover um, 800, I think. Yeah, D-plate, first year of production. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to get very close to one of those in a moment, but it will mean going near the live stage, so it might be noisy. Calibra, someone requested. So, yeah, we are delivering. We are delivering. Yeah. We've got a little 2CV van here. This is what's known as an AZU 250. Uh, this is the smallest of the 2CV vans. Uh, it's about in 1977-78, that must be right at the end of production. And then we got this rather lovely Ami 6 Estate. Wonderful cars. I do love an Ami 6. Yep, uh, Citroen 2CV Charleston, but no Dolly. So they're glamming it up this year with the Charleston. Yeah, Renault 11, I'm absolutely loving this. It's a lovely car. But uh, I think everyone in the family is getting excited about the Avon time. So, uh, I haven't seen a prairie, no. Japanese manufacturers always tend to be underrepresented at this show, which is a real shame. Yeah, yeah. And they got a, uh, is that a 15 or a 17? That's a 17. It's got the little grilled windows on the back. And the 15 had a sort of a similar style. Oh, it's a Steph. There goes a hard working Steph. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay, how are you? Yeah, very well. Oh, you're just meeting up with Joe. Yeah, I'm just meeting up with Joe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've already had a look at Nancy, looking amazing. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry, I feel like I don't have much value to add to this conversation. My head's like mashed potato. I can imagine, because you, you, you've obviously got the channel to think about, but you're also Lancaster Insurance, so yeah. busy all weekend. Yeah, bits on stage, and yeah, Excellent. all sorts. What's been your favourite car so far, Ian? Oh, I'm finding it so hard to pick. There are so many lovely Jowets here. But yeah. I think it's the NSU Sport Prince. Oh, yeah. That is have a beauty. Seen, have you seen the Fraser Vega? Oh. Yes. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah, We need yeah. to go and look at that. And Before this your... stream ends, we'll go and look at that. And what have Carly and Devin picked for their cars? Oh, so what are your favourites? I'm the Mac Carancho. I'm always weak for an Avon time. Uh, yeah. 
both, both with Matra involvement, of course. It's show. Yeah. What are you feeling? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm just going to... He's going to pull us up a picture. The, the one that I like the most. Someone has taken a lot of photos. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're actually live on the internet. We hope. Yeah, yeah we are, we are. How many yeah, people watching now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got about 469. Wow. Yes, very much. It's completely overstimulated. Yeah. Oh, this one. Oh, the frisky sport. Oh, wow. Yeah, we yeah. 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 Right, we'll continue. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. See you soon. Oh. Oh, this is Aunt Hansted's area. So that's a car I think is on MX5 running gear. I have a feeling Johnny Smith has tested that on his channel. Yes, but we're not far away. But yeah, this is the live stage area. So Mike Brewer is currently on stage. And I love the fact they've got someone signing live this year. Wow, that must be interesting. Must be up with her technical terms. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I haven't seen you for ages. How are you doing? Excellent. We're currently streaming live, but this is Melissa who owns the Laurel. I tested four years ago, five years ago. Yeah, well, yeah, gosh, how time flies. Yeah. So you keep him well? Absolutely, yes. And yeah. we've got another laurel ready for you as well. Oh, well, wow. all the laurels. Because you had the green one as well you were doing up. Yes, it's getting there. Excellent. Super. This year's it's a deadline to get finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. Yeah, look forward to it. Yeah, excellent. Well, good to see you. We'll probably see you again. We're here all day. So we'll catch you around. See ya. Right, where were we? Uh, BMW E21 Bauer convertible. Very nice. For transit here. Lovely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a, a stand people have been asking for. This is the Gate Classic Car Enthusiast Group. And uh, a fantastic display. They always have such a mix of cars. So you've got everything from a slightly shady Volvo 850 with headlamp wipers. This gorgeous little Vanden Pla princess. Yeah, I said Pla. Um, we've got great, great Floydian Sergals Peugeot 306 Cabriolet on the end. But uh, people wanted to see Sean and Jim, so we better go and find them. Oh, just before we do, we've got to come down here because we've got James Walsh's 2CV. If you watched my November show report, this 2CV was being put back together. Well, it was put back together, it went on a road trip around the UK, but since then it's been fully stripped again and completely rebuilt by Barry and Pete at Bourne, to, Bourne Citroen Centre. And it, this is the first time we've actually come and had a look at it. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Matt George on Practical Classics, that's his very well used Triumph 2000. And this is interesting because this is the last car built at Luton. Uh, it's a Vauxhall Frontera, I think it was 2004? 2003, apparently. And, uh, yeah, I once drove that. I had to borrow it from Vauxhall Heritage to get a colleague's family home. Very good air conditioning and actually really nice to drive. 2.2 DTI engine. But, yeah, let's get out of here. It's a bit loud and shouty. Oh, look at this. Honda 1300. Now this is a fascinating car because the Honda 1300 is air-cooled and the uh, Sekiro Honda insisted it was air-cooled but the car was not successful because it was noisy as air-cooled engines tend to be and that led to Mr. Honda kind of being forced out of his own company. So that's a fascinating car to see in the metal. So you can see the uh, four-cylinder engine uh, under the bonnet. I would love to have a closer look at one of those. Astonishing things. Uh, we need to go back over here. I know you're getting distracted by 126s. This is one of the Polish clubs here in the UK. Uh, and obviously the little Maluch, as they call them, uh, very, very popular here. They're rebuilding this green one over the course of the weekend by the look of it. We have a little Fiat to your thing. We've got the uh, Fiat Seicento here. And more importantly, we've got the Cinquecento in front of it so 
this is uh, featured on the Also Driven channel, and uh, they paid £500 for it. I, I like how we've walked near Fiat, and I can suddenly smell petrol. But tiny little four-cylinder engine in them, a lovely car. And uh, there's a big to-do list. Nothing to see, nothing to see. <laughs> oh, look, there's a, there's a very famous uh, YouTuber. Yeah, hello. hello we are live on the internet. Hello, How are you live doing? Live on the internet, people. I, we're, we're being very busy here. Sean is yeah. sewing up his seat. It's actually live reveal, then. Oh, live I, don't, reveal. I don't know whether I've stitched this correctly. Oh. So. That looks think? good. Does that look good? That looks lovely. It looks all right. So yeah, like I said, so much work going on at this show is what makes it good fun. Yes, we yeah. I managed to hit two things on the list. Okay. Um, Once I sewed that bit onto the vinyl, I might even take the top one off. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have um, the primarily sticking lots of uh, plasticky things <laughs> on the back of this. So I think we can successfully, as it's a live broadcast, we can... Look at that, it's been crossed off live. Yeah. Off another thing on our list. Brilliant. There we go. Well, I do love the fact you've actually got a full blown sewing machine set up here. Yeah. Uh, I had to sort my seat out though. Oh. Was way too low. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't reach the pedal. That, that could be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Brilliant. Well, good to see you. You too. Have and a uh, show. yeah, do check out their channels variously. Did they, say they were specially requested. They were specially requested. So say wave to your specially requesting people. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, goodbye from Also Driven, because you can never remember who we are because we've got two channels. Yeah, Also yes. Driven also and Morsels and Motors. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which one's the Astra on? Both. Kind of, but mine is Morsels and Motors, which is where I, tink I buy cars and tinker with them. Yeah. And then on our kind of joint channel, Also Driven, we have adventures we with them. We do stuff with them. Yeah. We do stuff. So yeah. our big announcement we can make live is that this is going to be driven to the factory in Poland next month. <gasps> so that's our Brilliant. big announcement. So yeah. On your channel and not on ours. Damn! All that advertising revenue we've yeah. lost. <laughs> well, have fun. That will be. I look forward to watching. Okay. Second time going. Bye. Bye. See you later. So uh, we still haven't found land grabs yet. We've got rovers variously. Uh, so another rover 800, rover 600. Huge fan of the rover 600s. They're great cars. We've got a 200 here, slightly ratty 200 on the um, Gay Classic Car Group stand. Alfa Romeo Busso engine sticking out of the 166 yeah good stuff we're back we're back to your favorite frisky again how did that happen but we're gonna go along this one in the hunt for land crabs I'm not sure there's ever been a hunt for land crabs before but there is now we're hunting for them as we make our way to Reliant Corner uh, Volkswagen type 181 the thing rare to see in right hand drive form that's really nice. Yeah, Maestro vans variously. There's at least three Maestro vans here. That's kind of unheard of. I got a Walsley 680 with um, the 2.2 litre overhead cam engine. Land crabs! So we've got the Walsley um, 1885. I don't know if either of them is a 2200. Two litre fuel injection. Oh, wow. So, like Tim at Cambrian Classics, his MGB has got a bored out B series to two litres. This has got that as well. Just the one carburetor here, though. But the Walsley's are lovely. It's so well finished. And we've got the Project J group. So, these are development Land Rovers. Look, a C plate. So, this must be one of the original development prototypes for the Land Rover Discovery. So that's uh, amazing to see. Love that colour, love the side stripes. Uh, behind us, Astra's, variously. Uh, that GTE is absolutely something. The depth of the paint on that car, that cannot be factory. LXI was your slightly sporty estate there. Yeah, we've got a Saxo, which I think was an original press car. It's on the Boston classic car club stand and it's got the sax number plate i have a feeling that belongs to john simpson who's um, involved with the boston club i could be wrong series one land rover here uh, this is, again is still the boston classic car group then we got a zook so if there's anyone from poland in hello we do have an actual zook here and as well as the zook 
Uh, obviously a fire truck. Oh, okay, sorry. But we've got Wartburgs. That's an original, it would have been sold in the UK as a Wartburg Knight. Uh, but uh, 353 is actually the type. That's uh, a, a later left hand drive facelift one. Very keen to do a video on Wartburgs. I think it is going to happen this year. Oh, we better have a quick run into Skoda land. Uh, yeah, because you're having a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We're going that way in a minute. Ah. This is end of the line. So we've got the uh, Elmo electric Skoda going on. I apologise for any background noise of people talking, but uh, they are talking. And what I love is this uh, favourite estate. My, my estate was a bit decadent in its bright red. That is a proper, like communist era colour I think even though it dates from 1992 so I think that predates the Volkswagen takeover and we've got Skoda Rapid next to it but we're getting, struggling to get in to look at that at the moment it's very busy down here but lovely model collection here as well and a Skoda Superb to show the, the uh, difference yeah there we go yeah just taking the um, Rear styling of that Honda 1300 it is uh, very unusual. I'm absolutely thrilled to know there is one here. Right, we need to get all the way to the back of this hall, so I hope you've got a cup of tea because it could take us a while. We're not into. No. Sometimes the November one I've seen some Aussie classics at. And last year my Aussie classic was here, my AU was here. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there is a, generally a bit of a shortage of um, Aussie metal here, unfortunately. No, no, and uh, I guess this isn't seen as their show, which is a bit of a shame. Bedford Midi, go and look at the Midi. That is a, a fine, fine vehicle to see here. I'm thrilled to see one of those here. Betty is not the classic, how dare you? Calibras, more Calibras. So we're definitely delivering on the Calibras. And a uh, fine ridey selection as well. We've got an RM there. Uh, I don't know what the older one is, but it's got triple wipers, so we better go and have a look. Look at that, three windscreen wipers, decadence. This is a Riley Imp, apparently. A resurrection rather than restoration, and all the better for it. Because you could just restore all the age out of that, it'd be utterly ruined. Uh, loving the um, Renault traffic here on the Pops Garage stand. That's a great sight. Uh, split screen Morris Minor van, that's great. That's the Minor light commercial vehicles register for the pickups and vans. Great to see. I think this one's an Austin, a late badged one. Uh, XJS Club have got a nice stand, nice mix of cars. Very early American spec XJS is good to see. We've got more Riley RMs here because I think the Riley RMs actually have their own club. Uh, so you've got RMAs and RMEs are the smaller engine, RMBs and RMDs are the bigger engine. I think the RME is the pretty cabriolet on the end, if I'm right. This is what you get when you spend your entire life uh, reading reference books, rather than going out and having fun. Yeah, very, very pretty. Uh, Volvo Club have got two lorries on their stands. So Mini Hub Nuts racing off to um, get photos of those. Yeah, oh, it is Crabbers. Hello. So this is the famous Ital, but what has been requested in this live stream that people wanted to see. You need to come and have a look at what's in the boot. I'm not sure what it is. It looks quite serious. So this is Ivan the Ital. Uh, it belongs to uh, Sarah Crabtree. It's absolutely beautiful. So we, we wonder what's going on there. We'll try and get a word if we can, but I'm, I'm not as rude as Martin Brumble. I don't, I don't want to just barge in. 
But yeah, it's such a lovely car with the seat covers and everything. Just great. For a, uh, truck or a bus, so that's good. Truck or a bus? Well, we can take that off. I don't think there are any buses yeah, this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello again. <laughs> super. Uh, Daimler over there. We'll, we'll see if we can come back over this way. Okay. A Mark One Capri as well. Very, very nice. Broad speed on it. Big spoiler on the boot. But yeah, it's a Daimler. Let's go and find out what it is. It is a Conquest Century. So the Conquest Century, I think the claim was it could do 100 miles an hour, and that's why they called it the Century. Fluid flywheel transmission. Hello. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. It ain't mine. It was my dad's and my mate bought it. He's done it all up himself. Oh, wow. He's done a lovely job. It's beautiful. Come and look at the interior. That is... Um, Stunning. stunning so yeah you've got this pre-select gear so you you select the gear but then you use what would be the clutch pedal to get that gear to engage and there's a fluid flywheel so you can um, stop without having to use a clutch so remarkable bits of kit it's just lovely look at this purely to stop the buffeting i think when you open the window driving along that is lovely i'm almost scared to touch it oh <laughs> Too ginger. Oh. Yeah, last time, oh, there we go. Last, last time it was here was 2050 at the restoration show. Okay. Completely. Oh bare, wow. And he finished it last year. I must have a photo or maybe even video of it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely to see. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay. Yeah. Superb cars. I am hoping to drive something with a fluid flywheel this year. So let's see if I can make that happen. Right. Should we go and see if we can get in for a chat with crabbers? Maxis, love a Maxi, especially a Maxi 2 with a black bumpers. I think I'm just a bit strange that way. But let's go and see if we can have a chat with crabbers. Hi, yeah. How are you doing? It's all right. Yeah, so, sorry to butt in, but we, we are. Uh, thank you. We, we are live on the internet at the moment, and people were asking to see your car. So I thought we'd come and say hello. So what's happening? Why, what's happening with Ivan? Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Why wouldn't they want to see this car? Yeah. I mean, come on. So what's going on? Uh, so we've had the differential changed. It's okay. all been done. All the oh, it's all done. It, it, it's Saturday off. lunchtime. You're done already. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, come on, Morris Marine Club guys. Yeah. They've got the muscle, so it's it was done. Them Excellent. Yesterday. So is it just getting noisy? It was very whiny. Oh dear. Very whiny. The radio, you know, had to get turned up yeah. increasingly. So, yeah, so it's all done. So I'm hoping that it's a nice, quiet ride. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. This is the fun thing. You come here, you do the work on your car, yeah, and you've no idea if it's been successful yeah. until you drive home on the Sunday night. And everyone keeps asking me, are you driving it back? No, of course I'm not going to drive it. That would be very, very silly of me to do that. Yeah, because it'll be dark on Sunday night and you just don't know. Well, I'm going to see Elton John on Sunday night straight after the show oh. across the road. So it's does does be... he like your towels as well? So, yeah, I might give him a lift. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's going to be a real late one for me. And I didn't really fancy a three and a half hour drive. Well, it'd be a four hour drive yeah. in, in that. So. No, I've been there. I can yeah, understand that. Yeah. yeah, so we thought we'll trail him home, make sure do a 50 or 60 mile um, drive, roundabout locally, mm -hmm. get him back up on the ramps and just check everything's all right Super. before I go on a long journey. Because yeah. next month, there's lots of shows starting, so there's going to be lots of stuff to go to. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Well, yeah. Your, your adoring fans are queuing up, so we shall make way oh, and continue around the show. But yeah, good to see you. We'll <laughs> good to see you. We'll catch you later on. You here. Yeah, see you here. later. <laughs> right. So on we go. The ever-ending search for the Reliance, which are probably where we're going to end things, I think. Probably around there. Around the Reliance. Oh, three and a half litre V8 in this TR7. That looks lovely. The stance on that is really, really nice. We've got a Triumph Spitfire here, Triumph Herald behind, representing Club Triumph. Nice, easy cars to work on. And you can sit down while you work on them. Uh, people said dollies. We've got dollar mites. Hello. Does that work? Do love these estates. Beautiful cars. So there we go. There is the slant for 
16 valve engine out of a Dolly Sprint. But I would remind people that other um, Dolomites do exist. I like the 1850s. But we mentioned Andy Rouse much earlier. It feels like hours ago uh, for driving the Sierra Cosworth. It is I think, hours ago. <laughs> I think he won the British Saloon Car Championship driving uh, a Dolly Sprint. Apparently, they loved the overdrive because it just gave them many more gears, keep the engine really in the peak of its power. Uh, another Hillman Hunter. Always oh, a GT. Nice. Bond bugs. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, Reliance. We are being followed, or are we doing the following? I don't know. Uh, Robin LE 93, limited edition. Uh, a yellow kitten. Is that the yellow kitten I drove? I'm struggling to remember. I think it is. It's got the hub nut sticker in the back already. But there's a few yellow ones around. But uh, yeah, great little things. Scimitar, again, we've got another GTE. Like I say, this show is absolutely chock full of them. But this, this display on the back here, this is the enthusiast of British motor vehicles, which makes it all the more unusual that there's a Fassel Vega HK500 here. These are fascinating cars built to exceptional standards. Chrysler, I think, V8 engines, but the ultimate in luxury. So let's see if we can get a look at the beast. We've got the stacked headlamps, Mercedes Bend esque. But uh, yeah, this one needs a little bit of love, I think. Look at the size of the carburetor. That is uh, enormous. They've got a push button selectable gearbox uh, on these, I think. Lovely little mini Clubman estate. That's really nice. Uh, Mark 1 console rather than Granada. Uh, still needs some work. The, the owner's been waiting that long. Things have gone a little sour, it seems. Uh, lovely little mini Mark 1. And another Austin Atlantic. That is a beautiful car. So it's nice to have a proper look at the Atlantic. Um, we should just go and have a look at Alpines and Tigers because why wouldn't you? Beautiful cars. But I think we're going to have to wind that one up. I'm starting to lose my voice. We've been going for how long now? Uh, an hour and a half. An hour and a half, gosh. Yeah. So yeah, there's a Sunbeam Tiger, which is the V8 version of the Alpine. And uh, as you will know from my uh, test uh, last year, year before, you doing what? Oh, you're swinging around. Yeah, I do like an Alpine, uh, lovely cars. Oh yeah, we've got we to gotta keep going. We haven't shown off this Avenger yet. Got, I think it's a top hat, so it's got the um, half vinyl roof. This one's in incredible condition. It really is very, very nice. I do like an Avenger. I think they're horribly underrated. Just point out that bonnet stop. What bonnet stop? Oh, yeah, Lego Man <laughs> on the MGZR there. That's quite cool. All right, we should keep on moving because we've got um, Talbot Sunbeam on the end here. A black one. Oh, uh, yeah, how are you doing? Good, yeah, nice to see you with the car. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, mem you memories, mem you memories of Whiteland Restoration, yeah, painting one. Uh, we need to go over here to look at the very 90s uh, MGZR, the max power. I mean, it is not my cup of tea by any stretch of the imagination, but I love that it exists. Yeah. It's just hilarious because all these cars sort of died and vanished, so it's great to see one that has survived. Really good. We haven't looked at Hillman Imps. We're getting get into trouble. We, we can't stop. We're just going to have to go all day. Yeah. Much, much going on in the chat at the moment. We'll find him. We'll find him. What he got seduced by? Okay. It's like a magpie, that boy. Yeah, MG3 here on the MG Car Club stand. Along with a much earlier, what is this? This is an MG1880. That is a fair old lump of car. A reminder that MG saloons are far from a new concept. They were existed all the way from the start, pretty much. Yeah, the Imp Club always put on a good display. Got some work going on there. A little... Um, yeah, interesting colour. And uh, should we have a look? We can just remind Kitch what an engine bay of an imp should look like. There we go, you've got the little 
slant four engine overhead cam tilted over to one side and uh, driving a gearbox which is not happy with Saxo power apparently. Sorry, Kitch. Oh, good choice. Yeah, lovely. Triumph GT6, the baby E type. Anyways, two litre six cylinder engine. Uh, standard eight here, an early one. No, no grill, just a hole. And then uh, they started to posh them up. So this is a 10 with the, um, a, a bit more of an actual grill going on rather than just a, a bomb hole. I did say bomb hole. Amusingly, 803 in the eight, uh, 948cc in the 10, exactly the same capacity as the A series of engine was available in. Nothing to do with them. Standard Vanguard, got a test of a Vanguard uh, on my channel. Uh, hello, Peter, if you're watching. Uh, he's done some restoration work on his Vanguard, uh, but it was a lovely drive. So really, really nice. Uh, Daimler Darts, the uh, SP250s, the Edward Turner V8 engines. We're trying to set something up. I've got friends who've got those, and we want to set something up and actually um, make that happen. So that's something we're trying to do. Uh, here on the, um, oh, it's the Great British Car Journey. Of course, we've been there before. With one of the cars from their collection, FE Victor. I believe they are still doing driving dad's car. So that's lovely, that FE Victor. Uh, Triumph Stag, Stag Owners Club stand. So here is the engine being rebuilt. Uh, you've got a single overhead cam for each bank, uh, developed by Triumph for themselves, refused to use the Rover V8 engine, and uh, unfortunately that engine proved quite problematic in service. Although I'm happy to report that they uh, have managed to iron out many of the issues now. And uh, we're going to look at TR7s, TR register stand. And now I think we need to think about winding this one up because, yeah, my voice is utterly shot. Yeah, we, we need a sandwich or something. Yeah, Pant pantograph wiper moment on the TR7. Lovely sort of green colour. That is, again, very of its time. And the TR7 replaced the TR6. So you can see why some people might have been a, a little aggrieved. But the 6 was an evolution of the 5 and 4 before it, but the TR7 was revolution, completely different. And this is a Triumph TR2. I think. Again, just mostly a hole for a, a grill. Standard Triumph being the same company back then, of course. Uh, Triumph TR4. We can tell it's a 4, which has a beam rear axle, because it doesn't have side indicators. How is that for a fact? I'm so boring. But, uh, yeah, and a, a, a grid all uh, TR7 on the end. It's basically as an 8, so these were built at the time, modified, big fat arches, big V8 engine. But yeah, it's been a, a great show. I hope you've enjoyed uh, me prattling on for the past however long it's been, far too long. Myself yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you to my camera lady for doing a tremendous job today. I tell you what, it's been a bit like being inside your brain, Ian. Okay. I'm just following the randomness of your brain around. Yeah, my, my brain is entirely random. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and we shall see you in a future video, I guess. Ooh, so, pressure. yeah, there's pressure. Where are you going to put you to? Okay. Bye. <laughs> and now they can see us. Oh, no. This, this was a bad idea. Bad idea. Bye, folks.